Uh, this is Jerry Hesch at Hesch Institute in Aurora, Colorado. And this is my client, Drew. And he is six feet four. Okay. Um, he has some left knee pain and some low back pain, some right upper trapezius pain, but you've been responding very well to treatment. I've seen him for two days and today is day three and this is his last visit. He drove up from Amarillo. Amarillo. Yeah, yeah. And the Hesh Institute is in Aurora, Colorado. And I like to give some advice about how my clients move their body and there's a little controversy there's very little research to support that teaching people what's called proper body mechanics makes a difference in their pain nonetheless I think from the perspective of prevention I think it does make sense um, on your MRI and CT it, it shows well certainly on the MRI it shows a labral tear in your right hip at 12 o'clock um, so I think for that reason avoiding end range such as bringing your knee to your chest which you tell me you feel a little pinching in each hip you know I think that it's very appropriate to avoid that um, and we showed you stretching the knee to the outside of the shoulder and uh, you tolerate that well uh, I think you're going to live very well with these uh, labral tears. I don't think they're going to cause you any problem. Um, they may scar down and heal and, you know, be fine. You have a little bit of a cam lesion on the femoral neck on the right side. Um, I don't recall if you have any of that on the left hip. But again, you live well with these things. So looking at the pathology does not predict how the person feels, does not predict pain. Um, you have a disc herniation pushing into and narrowing the canal a little bit, the lateral recess of the lumbosacral region, but you have no symptoms um, of radiculopathy. You have no symptoms of pain down the leg. I think you're going to live very well with that. Um, we treated some biomechanical issues with your pelvis, hip, and low back, and I think that those will serve you well. So now I want to cover um, techniques of moving in space. Um, let's start with sitting. Uh, sit on the sofa. And this is my sofa. This is my living room. And it's a cheap sofa, I admit it. <laughs> um, this is not a good sofa for you because your hips, your pelvis is much lower than your knees. Mm -hmm. So I would advise a taller sofa and a, a more firm sofa than this one. Okay. Now let's pretend you're sitting in a restaurant and you have to reach. Let's put you in that other chair. That's more realistic. Go ahead and turn it sideways. I want a side view of it. Okay, All right. So you the you're fine. Right there is perfect. Good. So bring your knees and feet together. Okay. And pretend you're reaching for a salt shaker that's far away. Go ahead and reach for it. All right. Good. Good. And now we're going to contrast that with bringing your feet and knees apart. Good. And now bend. What's different? Bending at the, the hips. Yeah. That allows more hip motion when your knees are apart. And no one has specifically studied this. Um, you know, d will doing that prevent pain in the future? Nobody knows. It has not been specifically researched. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting is that's a low chair. So I believe that's a 30 inch tall chair. And I think the design of your hip joints, the acetabular cup is such that, or maybe the height of the tibia is such that you actually look pretty good in that chair. Your thigh is parallel to the seat surface. Okay. Um, 
For a lot of folks, I recommend that they sit with some elevation where the hips are a little bit higher. So go ahead and put that foam pad underneath you. That's a balance pad that I found on Amazon for about $20. And that puts your hips a little bit higher than your knees. But it's an individual thing. For me, it's very helpful when I go to a restaurant. It's very helpful to use that pad. Um, but we tested you with this and it didn't seem to make any difference in your comfort. So you don't need to worry about that. So the sofa you need to worry about, but a restaurant chair you don't need to worry about. All right, very good. So let's now uh, pretend that this is, move the chair back just a little bit. And um, we'll pretend that's a car and it's a sedan, okay? This doesn't apply to um, higher vehicles. But for a sedan, the best way to get in and out of the car to minimize twisting um, in your spine at end range is to bring your left foot out just halfway. Good. And now catch up with the other leg. Beautiful. And now bring the left leg out the other half. Good. And catch up. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Very good. And sitting down in the car is the same thing. You just open the door and you sit down. No, 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 sorry, no. Just just face me, okay? okay? Just sit, oh, yeah. okay? Sit. Now, only bring the right foot in halfway. And now catch up with the left, and then, then finish it. Beautiful, okay? Very good. What are you pointing at? The push to start. Say what? <laughs> it's the push to start. Okay, sounds good. So now you can move the chair out of the way. So show me how you would bend to pick up a pencil. Really nice, I like that technique. Um, I like bending at hips and knees and you do that just naturally, okay? Um, the other thing that you do right is that you point your feet out a little bit, okay? Um, some people don't point their feet out and I recommend that you do that. Let's practice with your feet pointing straight ahead. So now bend down and pick up something. And what's different? Can't bend my knees. You can't bend your knees as much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As much. Yeah, yeah. So I would submit that when your toes point forward, you have less hip motion, and it, and it is more lumbar motion. And it might take your lumbar spine to end range. So I recommend pointing your feet out slightly whenever you bend down to pick something up. Okay? And then turn towards me. And um, yeah, point your feet straight ahead. And we're going to just pretend you're doing some task, cooking a Christmas dinner, and you have to repeatedly bend to the right. So keeping your feet pointed forward, just bend to the right a couple of times, 90 degrees. Okay, and now just very slightly point the right foot out. Just 10 degrees, 15, 20. That looks like 20. That's good. Okay, and now twist to the right. Tell me what is different. It's moving in my, my hips. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're getting more motion in the hips. The back's not going as far. Yeah, your back is not going to end range. Very good. So I recommend that. And now... Um, when you reach with your arm, if you reach as far as you can, go ahead and reach as far as you can, your, your shoulder becomes unstable and then your spine twists and you're a little bit at risk to injure, injure your low back. What you can do to stabilize your shoulder is to pinch your shoulder blades together Keep them pinched and now reach. And now you're a lot stronger. Yeah. And if I was to test your strength when, you, when your shoulder comes forward, I could easily push your arm down. But when you pinch your shoulder blades, then you're very strong. Another way to do that is to consciously reach with your elbow. Exactly. So the trapezius muscle in the, in the, in the back of the arm, tr uh, sorry, triceps muscle, crosses onto the scapula and it 
somehow it stabilizes the scapula and then you reach only with the length of your arm. So once again, just reach with your elbow. Forget you have a hand, just, yep, beautifully. So that's another way of accomplishing that, okay? So these are some real simple things to do. And um, one exercise that reinforces bending at the hips with your spine is to do a quarter squat. So go ahead and do a couple of quarter squats. And feet are as wide as your shoulders, so that's fabulous and your feet point outward you know when you do it and that's very that's very good so quarter squats are fabulous my knees don't tolerate a half squat um, but a quarter squat I think is very safe and you can add weight to that that's a good thing to do every day maybe a hundred reps so I'm scratching my brain to see if there's anything that I'm missing in terms of the simple biomechanical advice I give people, but I, I'm coming up blank. <clears throat> so I'll stop filming here. Thanks very much.